Catherine, I see from my uh, CNN uh, website live update page now that's all just about campus protests that, uh, quote, Yale University students set up tents, risk possible suspension and potential arrest, school says. So uh, what is a uh, libertarian to make of all of this tumult, Catherine? And is it time for all of us to embrace our inner, inner Lanny Friedlander? It's hard to say. Absolutely. We will be approaching this issue from the pigs or other pigs lens. And uh, Lanny Friedlander and his infinite wisdom was correct. Um, so I think the the kind of first question uh, of a libertarian should be, all right, this is, this is first and foremost a free speech issue, right? Uh, and that over and over and over throughout history, college campuses have managed to not thread that needle correctly. Like they just, for some reason, cannot figure out how to make a clear series of guidelines and then stick to them. And this is largely because it depends on the relationship of the protesters to the national political context and also just the political biases of the college administrators themselves. So in this case, uh, and really in every case, I turn to Greg Lukianoff, who has offered some excellent clarifying remarks uh, in the context of his work at FIRE. And... Um, you know, I think free speech protects people who are saying truly horrible things, including truly horrible things about uh, about Jews and truly horrible things about Israel. Um, it does not protect threats of violence. Those are the two easy polls to start with. Uh, I think the question of the tense on campus is a weirdly difficult one. And in this case, most universities already have clear content neutral rules about when you can put up an encampment on campus and what happens if you do so in violation of those rules. If people want to put up their tents and then bear the consequences for having done so, that's civil disobedience. And sometimes we like that and sometimes we don't, depending on the cause. It sounds easy when I say it like that. It sounds easy when Greg says it like that. And it is just truly astonishing how spectacularly universities that are supposed to be the homes of the smartest people in this country are screwing it up every single day. Uh, FIRE, uh, for those uh, scoring at home, uh, is the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. It used to be in education, and so they specialize on that. Greg's piece on Substack is terrific. We'll put it in the show notes, but it just measures up the number of events on campus this year having to do with cancellation of speakers and disruption of events and free people being punished for their free speech as well. And it's very useful background for all of this. Nick, you're a doctor of something or other. Um, and you're also uh, someone who's defended higher education. But uh, first, I should just give you your own bespoke uh, Rutgers headline here. Um, Muslim groups file discrimination complaint against Rutgers. So uh, congratulations for that. Um, Put it in the context of un universities here. George Packer at the Atlantic had a big piece or a piece piece. Uh, tying what was he all apologizing for this time? <laughs> he's not. He's not this time. He'll apologize for yeah. this piece later. Uh, but he sort of ties this all in to kind of the revolutions of 1968 coming home to roost in such a way. And I want you to react to a short uh, little passage that I will read to you from that, if you don't mind. Uh, he says, ideas born in the, in the 60s, subsequently refined and complicated by critical theory, post-colonial studies, and identity politics are now so pervasive and unquestioned that they've become the instincts of students who are occupying their campuses today. Group identity assigns your place in a hierarchy of oppression between oppressor and oppressed. No room exists for complexity or ambiguity. Universal values such as free speech and individual equality only privilege the powerful. Words are violence. There's nothing to debate, end quote. Uh, do you uh, kind of agree with the Packer analysis that what we've seen now is the triumph of 1968 illiberalism? Yeah, I actually don't. Um, and I do recommend reading that piece. He quotes D.H. Lawrence towards the end saying, you know, the arguments of uh, one generation become the instincts of the next. And that's, you know, fascinating. I, when I was in graduate school, in particular in the late 80s through the mid 90s, I was taught by a ton of former hippies, many of whom had literally been educated at UC Berkeley when Ronald Reagan shut down the colleges. Uh, and he did that partly because the hippie protesters were saying, shut down the colleges, you know, because there's so much bad stuff is happening here. And then when he did it, you know, they were like, why did he do that? Um, but I will say that the the 
the leading edge boomer generation f- who were on campus in the 60s uh, and into the early 70s were remarkable for being totally into free speech and robust debate. You could shout, you could chant, you could do all of that stuff. Violence was off the table, but they were true uh, you know, apostles of free and open and unfettered debate. These were also the people who had either gone to or helped pr- produce teach-ins against the Vietnam War in the uh, in the mid six, starting in the mid sixties. Uh, Rutgers had a particularly uh, known one because Eugene Genovese, the great uh, U.S. historian of slavery, got fired over his participation in a Vietnam uh, teach-in in I think sixty five. Um, so I don't think I think it's easy to say, you know what, there was a bunch of, uh, you know, violent, mil- uh, violent political protests in 1968, and that some of it had to do with X, Y and Z theorists. Mar- Marcuse is the is the one who comes up the most. I don't think that explains what's going on in campus here. I also don't think that the oppressor oppressed thing or that the valorization of identity politics in the way we're seeing it. I don't think it's a straight line from 68 uh, with a stopover in postmodern identity in the 70s. I think as much as anything, what you're seeing is that colleges over the past you know, several decades, uh, you know, it is a declining industry. Uh, and what you're seeing is a failure of leadership at the top of, the, uh, of you know, purpose of the business, et cetera. Uh, college, uh, the number of, uh, of undergrads peaked in 2010. It's been declining ever since. It had a slight uptick last year. Most people assume that colleges will be uh, have fewer and fewer people there. And what you see in Sunset Industries are idiot CEOs. And this is you know, college presidents, uh, it is faculty assembly, et cetera. They don't have a sense of purpose anymore. And what happens with that then is that all sorts of different things start to you know start to creep in and claim the uh, the ruins of the empire for their own, and that's what's going on here. But I, you know, as somebody who is you know very into postmodern thinking, who is very opposed to identity politics, the way that it gets talked, it's it's hard for me to see the direct line from Foucault uh, to uh, you know a bunch of rich overprivileged kids, you know, having great tents in the Columbia Yard. Um, it's, it's not because of that. It's something else. And mostly first and foremost, it's that nobody knows what a university is for anymore, starting with the people who actually run it. Uh, and then you get chaos as a result. That was a clip from the latest reason round table. If you want to see more clips, go here. If you want to see the whole episode, go here, make sure to subscribe at reasons, YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening, watching, or both.